Hey everybody, it's Jake, and today we're gonna to show you how to build your own raised bed gardens. So I built these about three years ago, but I'm gonna show you that footage from then. Uh, talk about some things that I would wanna change if I were to do it again, and some things that you're gonna to need to know. So when I built these, I was really looking for three things. One, the price, two, durability, and three, they have to go together easy and last. So as far as the price goes, this is gonna be the cheaper way to go compared to doing these out of all cedar. As far as lasting a long time, again, this corrugated steel and the cedar is gonna last a long time. These have held up really well. They're still straight, and we'll show you that in a little bit. And three, the ease of these just going together. Um, there's only a few parts that go on these, uh, and they've lasted a long time. They're still straight, they're still square. I don't have to worry about it, and I'm just going to plant again and again and again. So let's jump into it, and we'll see you on the other side. For materials for these boxes, I decided on corrugated steel and cedar posts on the inside and top. Now, at the time, I was able to get this 28 gauge thick steel from Lowe's. Everyone else had really thin stuff, but today, all big box stores sell really thin stuff, 32, 36 gauge, and that's way too thin. So you have a couple options. One, you can buy old corrugated from Facebook Marketplace, stuff like that, old tin, or you can double it up, which gets a little more expensive, but not too bad. Now, I'm trimming this down to 24 inches. It comes 27 inches, and I didn't need it that tall. Uh, I decided just to use a circular saw blade that's made for steel, but I picked the wrong blade. Uh, Evolution makes one and Diablo makes one. I think I prefer the Diablo much better. It cuts a lot smoother. It doesn't jump as much in the arbor is the right arbor for the saw. Now I did have to take my circular saw and I taped up the inside so I'm not getting pieces of metal flying up my face. I got my gloves on, got my glasses on for sure because it does kick up quite a bit of chips, metal chips, and those don't feel good. So Make sure that you're wearing the right PPE. Make sure you even probably has a face shield on while you're doing this. But this makes really quick work if you're doing multiples of these to cut this down. Now, if you're only doing one or two boxes, you can probably get away with some tin snips or with a cutoff wheel. Um, but if you're doing more than one, uh, I would recommend using that steel blade that's made by Diablo. Now you can see here, I'm just struggling just to try and get through this thing. Uh, it did bind up a little bit and probably using a battery circular saw. It's not the best, um, but I just kept going and, and got her done. I got all my pieces trimmed to 24 inches tall and then took a few of those pieces and are cutting those in half for my short side to make it four feet. So all of these are going to be four feet by eight foot boxes. So for my post and the top, I'm using redwood cedar. Um, this material is actually rough cut, so when you go to the lumber yard, if you can get rough cut, it's actually a cheaper one, and it's a little bit wider. This is actually three and three quarters by three and three quarters, where the finished stuff is usually three and a half by three and a half. So you're getting more material, and it's usually for lower cost, which is a bonus. And there's no uh, pressure treating to this. A lot of the pine or whatever, it's pressure treated with a chemical to prevent it from rotting and I don't want to be putting that in with my garden. I don't know what they're using as far as the chemical to pressure treat it, uh, and I just want to keep it as natural as I can. So um, for that, I'm just going to use the redwood cedar for my post and for the top. As far as lengths for these, I'm going to make four of these 24 inches long and another two 32 inches long, so I can get that out of two eight foot pieces. If you want to go the full width of your sheet, 27 inches, and not cut anything down, you're gonna need one eight foot long piece and one 10 foot long piece to make that happen. If you wanna cut your sides down to 24, you're just gonna need two eight foot pieces and that will get you by. The two middle set posts will actually be, I think, 10 inches, which probably will be enough. So that's kind of what you're looking for if you're gonna go ahead and make your post. So let's go get cut. So I'm cutting all my posts going in the corner four inches longer than the panel height. And then the two for the center, I'm gonna cut those 10 inches longer than my height and all of those are going to get buried in the ground. It's going to give it some support, keep it from moving, and I think it's going to work out really nice. It's starting to rain. I 
I think the best part of this project was getting to do this with my kids. My middle daughter really wanted to come out and help me and get those screws in here, so we got some time with the uh, driver and getting these in because I know they would hold up to the weather. Probably not necessary, but I think they'll hold up really nice. And I did go a little overkill. I put them on every single rib going down and with two on top and two on bottom where they go into each one of those posts. So once I got the sides in on the short end side, I went and got my long panel and got that propped up very carefully and then attached the long panel to the posts as well. For the top of the box, I decided to go with these one by six cedar deck boards. And I thought it would be a great idea to have just a 45 degree miter, but just with the length of these boards, I can never quite get it to line up just perfect with just kind of the bends and the twists that I had. Uh, I have made another garden box for a neighbor, and on that one I did decide to go with just a half lap. And I would recommend that over just trying to do the miter. It matched up a lot nicer than trying to make this miter work. So I would definitely go with the half lap if I were to build this again. I used pocket screws on the bottom of the base just to try and keep these miters together. Uh, with weather and heat and cold, they still do separate. And again, they're not the greatest, um, but doing these pocket holes definitely did help rather than just trying to screw them down to the corners. After that, just gotta make sure that everything is square before I attach my frame to the top. So just taking a measurement from corner to corner and making sure my box is square it does just take a little bit of time kind of kicking one corner in or pulling one corner out but that way I know when I attach my top I'm not struggling and I know that my box is going to be square uh, when I actually screw my top down to it. I then just laid out some marks on the top so I would have some good locations to screw my screws from this top into those posts in the corners as well as my two posts on the sides. So once I have those marks, I want to just pre-drill that and make sure that I countersink that a little bit so my screw heads aren't sticking up. And just took a little bit of time. Again, I'm gonna make sure I wanna do this right and make sure this is gonna last. So getting those pre-drilled, getting those countersunk, and then go ahead and putting those screws in. Now, this is probably the hardest part of the build. I really had to get into that soil to make sure I got a good location for those posts where they have somewhere to live and make sure this isn't going to be moving around. Um, I did some string lines to make sure I'm going straight and the post hole digger and snapping those lines off, of course. Um, but just taking the time just to get out that dirt, make sure I've got this nice and level, and then go ahead and get my box located where it needs to go. The nice part is these are really light and easy to move when you do have them assembled. So you can assemble them like in your garage or something and walk them down well, even with one person. They're not super heavy. Last thing to check before filling this back in, at least in the four corners, is make sure we're level. Get there. And all right. Focus. There. Okay, good. One more. good there so now what I'm gonna do is actually backfill just the corners here just kind of lock it in place and then I'm gonna put the posts in in the center here and right down in there 
I do feel like sometimes even just getting those location ready for all these boxes was the harder part of this build, to be honest. Um, but making sure I got these level and square and all lined up, um, it just makes that project look so much better when you're done. So uh, getting these center posts locked in, and then I just screw the top in first, get that in its location, and then I'm going to go ahead and just zip in these screws uh, along the side. And again, I kind of maybe went overkill with these screws, but it's better to have more than less. So on my boxes, I still need to create a corner cap for all the corners because I don't want that sheet metal getting caught or anything, especially like a hose or my girls running around and catching a corner. Uh, so I'm creating these corner cap pieces and these are all made from the top decking material I use for the top of the box. So on the bandsaw, I'm just gonna cut this in half and then flip it and then resaw it right down the center and cut it in half again and end up with something like this that will go from top to bottom on the box and it will turn out really nice. So um, let's go ahead and set this up and let's get cutting. Now I did have to make a bunch of these uh, and I did have a lot of scraps left over from off cuts. So it didn't take too long, but it was a lot of just cut in half and then cut in half again. And then I had to cut one of these a little bit shorter than the other just so when I glued it together, it was actually the same on each side. So I just trimmed off a little bit on the table saw on a few of these. So when it came time to gluing these up, I just had to put some glue on here and then just tack it on with some brad nails, let it set up, and then trim it to however tall I needed these cap pieces to be. Now I did have varying heights because of the slope, so I just cut measured each one and then I just pushed that down to the ground um, just a little bit and then just pulled that up and put a few screws in and we're locked in and all finished. Now, when it comes to other things like what soil and how do I set these up with my compost and what goes in these boxes and how to prep these for winter and getting the best solution for you, I'm going to have some videos right here in a playlist. So check those out and we'll see you in the next video.